Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Chemistry Essentials video 45. It's on catalyst classes, or the three different types of catalysts that we use. Catalysts are important in manufacturing, in refining, in life in general. And they come in three different forms. We have acid-base catalysts, so this sulfuric acid is going to be an example of that. We have surface catalysts, and so this would be similar to the catalyst you're going to find in a catalytic converter in your car. It's able to take carbon monoxide, this dangerous gas, and convert it into carbon carbon dioxide. And then enzymes are going to be another group of catalysts, and those are going to run every chemical reaction inside a living body. And so catalysts can be broken into three classes. We've got acid-base, surface, and then finally we have enzymes. How does an acid-base catalyst work? Well, essentially it's going to take one reactant, and we're either going to add a proton to it, or we're going to pull a proton away. And as we do that, that's going to speed up the reaction. A surface catalyst is generally going to be made of metal, and if we can increase the surface area, it's going to work better. What it does is it increases the number of successful collisions in a reaction, and it also can create new reaction intermediates, or new steps in this overall reaction mechanism. And then finally, we have enzymes. Those are the biological catalysts, and what they can do is also produce new intermediates, or they can simply tug on a molecule, and they can lower its activation energy. So let's start with an acid-base catalyst. What these are doing, remember, is adding a proton or taking a proton away from one of those reactants. And here's an example of a reaction that is catalyzed by an acid-base catalyst. We've got isobutane and we've got propene. So these are going to be found in just regular gasoline, fossil fuels. But what we're doing in this uh, step of refining is we're actually making isooctane. And so we're making another um, hydrocarbon. And so if you ever fill up for gas and you see that there are different levels of octane, what that really is a measure of the percent of octane that we have, or isooctane that we have in our gasoline. Well, the higher that number is, it doesn't give us more energy, but what it does is it allows our combustion in our internal combustion engine to be more consistent. And so um, if we have really low isooctane levels, you can eventually experience what's called knocking in your engine. And it would work better in a diesel engine, for example, if we have low octane fuels. And so what is the role of this sulfuric acid? The sulfuric acid is going to donate a proton. So it's protonating this propene, and as it does that, it allows us to form this isooctane that won't normally form on its own. How does a surface catalyst work? Well, generally, surface catalysts are going to be made of metal. And if you remember, metal, uh, if we have a big chunk of metal, they're going to share their electrons in a delocalized cloud around all of the atoms. But as we approach the surface, of that metal, we're going to find that there are going to be unpaired electrons. And so what you get are what are called active sites on the surface of that metal. And so that allows the, the catalyzing of a reaction. In this case, we have hydrogen gas and ethylene. And what they'll do is they'll dock with a surface, or the surface of that surface catalyst. And that process is called adsorption. What does that mean? It's not absorbing into the metal, it's adsorbing on the metal. And what it's doing is it's sharing and then pulling electrons from one place to another. And so what you can get is these, in this case, these hydrogen atoms can move around on its surface and they're more likely to find a correct collision with that original molecule. Same thing right here. And so what we can do on that surface is we can catalyze the reaction. We're more likely to successfully produce that ethane. And so the increase in surface area if we make it a real fine powder or a fine dust or a fine mesh, we can actually increase these collisions even more. What's a great example of a process that's catalyzed this way is the Haber process. So Fritz Haber is notorious scientist, but he came up with this Haber process. And in it, what you're really doing is taking nitrogen out of the air and we're making ammonia out of it. Now in life, bacteria can do this. They can take nitrogen out of the air, put it into the soil, but without the Haber process, we couldn't do this on our own. And it's, it's estimated that a third of all the people on our planet are eating food that's produced through this process. And if you look at it, we've got a number of different catalysts and a number of different containers. And you can see if we look at all the elementary steps of this reaction, there's a lot of adsorbing of the gases, adsorbing of the nitrogen. And so eventually over time, what we're doing is we're creating ammonia. And here's the energy profile of that whole reaction. 
Last type is going to be an enzyme catalyst, and so this is going to be a biological catalyst. It's found inside our body. And so a great example would be the enzyme that breaks down sucrose. Sucrose is simply going to be table sugar, and so if we look at it, it is a disaccharide. We have two sugar molecules attached together. If we represent it like that, then an enzyme that breaks that down would be called sucrase. And what's going to happen is the sucrase uh, will hold the sucrose. And what it does is that you have this fit where the enzyme kind of wraps around it and tugs on that. And as it does that, we can break that disaccharide apart into its two monosaccharides. And everything in our body is going to be mediated through enzyme catalysts like this. If you have a hard time breaking down lactose, it's because you don't have lactase, that enzyme that can break it up. And so how do we control everything in our body? It's through these biological catalysts that are made of proteins. And so did you learn to explain changes in reactions arising from acid base, remember that's transfer of a proton, surface catalyst, remember that's allowing those collisions to occur, or enzyme catalyst? Well, if you did, you learned what I wanted you to, and I hope that was helpful.